Who are you picking out? Um, Tom Cousins. Tom Cousins! Oh. Come on down, sir! <laughs> Neil, whilst Tom makes his way to the arena, I don't think he could quite believe it. Talk us through the, uh, talk us through the choice. I just, I just obviously, uh, Tom, Tom's the informed player this year, you know, he's winning lots of events, and uh, yeah, I just obviously want to play the best player, so uh, yeah. Well, I absolutely love the reaction, because Tom has the, the look of a man that was not expecting to play one frame of ball today, but here he is. I love the choice, Neil. Tom Cousins is going to be your next player in the last man standing. Tom, get yourself into the arena. Commentary next, Neil Rayburn versus Tom Cousins. Best of luck, Neil. Remember, two more wins keeps you off the table. But it will be Tom with the first break. And he's made a ball. Won't be his best break he hits this season. Certainly wasn't. He's got one of the best breaks in the world. That was one he caught a little bit off, hence the, the split not being great. But he's made a ball. He gets first chance. Yeah, and um, Tom's, Tom's bad breaks are... Uh, you know, as good as a lot of people's good breaks, aren't they, if we're being you, you honest about it? You mentioned it there. You, you have practiced with Tom. You're in similar parts of the world when you are practicing. What is it like playing Tom in practice? Because we see him in tournaments where he's just laid back like he's having a knock in the club. I can just imagine him in practice, and he might have these runs where you just you don't see the table for a little while. Yeah, it does happen like that, to be honest. Oh, eight ball Ooh. straight away. Tom Cousins has gifted the first frame to Neil Rayburn. We said he might be caught a little bit cold. You learn to... How much? Oh, Neil gets this break all wrong, but he's going to get rewarded. Opportunity here to really make the last shot that Tom played hurt even more. 2-0 up with a clearance here would be exactly what Neil Rayburn would like. It's not going to be that easy. A red-yellow at the top left-hand corner causing him a little bit of an issue. Yeah, and a finish here really would put the pressure on Tom's next break because, um, as you say, half an hour races to six. You know, normally a 2-0 lead is is a dry break, so, you know, no one's really bothered about a 2-0 here or there. It's, um, you know, e easy to get back if, um, if there's a dry break the other way. But in a half an hour race to six, it is going to play on your mind a little bit, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Well, he's going to go for red, so I thought he might be looking at the red. He's pointing now. He, I thought he might be looking at the red to top left off the yellow. Hard to get to that area now. So we could just drop this one in and play the cue ball into the area at the top, but that's not guaranteed to work. A key shot will be coming up in a moment. He just needs to be careful of the cue ball here. Um, you can see he's looking at playing into the the gap of the reds and hopefully potentially potting the yellow ball. Um, won't be going cushion first, obviously, because of the in-off for the cue ball. Always a bit more difficult when you're bridging as well. That's come out great. Neil just checking to see which pockets that red is available closest to the eight ball. Once he decides which pocket he's going to pot it in, that will decide his pattern for these first two up the top. Oh, he's having a very good look to see if this one goes. It's, <laughs> it's amazing, actually, because it, it looks such an easy ball, but it, it's trickier than it looks. Yeah, it looks like it goes in both middles and both corners, but been full before, haven't we? Well, he might be just winding Tom up. Bit of gamesmanship, we like that, especially in a in a day like today. It probably yep. flies in and he's just given it a little bit of a Phil Harrison there. <laughs> Why not? Oh, has he snookered himself? He has. Oh, he might be or okay. has he? He looked. He did not want to look when he was walking around the table, but he Either can see enough to play the double. Yeah, the double or the swerve potentially. Neil is absolutely phenomenal at doubles as well. One yeah. of the very best at it. With that yellow where it is, could potentially play as a big pocket as well. So if he does come a bit wide near the top jaw, I think it might flick the yellow and go. Oh. oh, and in it goes. Unbelievable. What a start to this match. I want to see the players give it large on that sort of thing. I mean, the normal practice there is just to apologise and acknowledge the, the, the huge bit of fortune, but <laughs> I, want to, I want to see the players embrace it. 
Well, yeah, and why not? Because, um, you know, he's got Tom under it a little bit here, I think. Yeah, Tom breaks dry. This time he got the break right, and it breaks dry. It just shows you how mad this game is. Caught that one so much better than the first, but no reward. And Neil's back at it again. Another chance for him. Your work to do a little bit, you feel, on both colour sets. So um, personal choice as to how he feels he can he can break out or get on the bad ball of each set. He wants the reds then. So if, if it is reds, it's just the one nearest the top right-hand corner pocket. That's the one to land on. I don't know whether he lands somewhere near the right centre pocket, whether he can get through to the potting angle or not, or whether he has to play some sort of cannon on the yellow or some very tight positional shot. Yeah, the good news for Neil is that there's um, a lot of reds up there to be able to pop him into the position he wants to be in. So, for instance, um, the three reds on the left, if he plays the right of the three, as we're looking with a bit of right-hand side now, he could obviously chip into that yellow ball. Um, but obviously the, um, the danger with playing that shot would be you're only playing on the one ball. So. Looks like he's got more room than we thought and he's played on it this way. Oh, there's a few of the top players watching on. Three hitmen and Gareth Potts. You get the sense that Gareth is not expecting to be picked out. <laughs> All the other players are ready <laughs> ready and raring to go at a moment's notice. Gareth, Gareth is just chilling out. He's wearing jeans and a T-shirt. I mean, I don't know who's going to call out Gareth because he's one of the players that isn't a hitman right up there in the rankings, but someone will fancy it. Yeah, I mean, I'd be tempted to call him out just because he's uh, wearing jeans and <laughs> You want to see him get changed in two minutes? <laughs> well, he'll have, he'll have less. He'll be on the clock. <laughs> he could be 1-0 down by the time he gets out to the arena. Yeah, it's worth a shout. be interesting, actually, to see what the players will do. We're going to talk about it all the way through this weekend. You know, there's obviously, you know, seeing Neil call out Tom Cousins as the the number one provisional player in the world right now is all about the bounty but that isn't a bonus you get with Gareth Potts so be interesting to see who fancies that right now Neil's got this eight ball to go 3-0 in front yeah and if you're going to call out Tom you need to back it up with a performance and um, although there's been a little bit of luck involved so far this has been good from Neil yeah this visit in particular no luck in this one at all just a beautiful clearance Okay, now, Tom, if you're going to get into this match, now is your moment. Cue ball in hand anywhere on the table. A wide open split. And this is an opportunity for the man of the year to get going here. Yeah, and in Tom's head, he'll be thinking it's an opportunity for 3-2. Initially looked at the hard red ball down the rail and then realised that all the yellows have pockets. I was wondering why we've been raving about Tom Cousins. He's absolutely flying. Hit the ground running when he turned up at Ultima Pool in the Pro Cup flew through to the final, lost out to Jordan Shepard and it took him a little bit of time to find his feet puts that down to lack of practice he's suddenly found the practice table and he's found the form and the titles have come thick and fast thereafter four pro series titles to his name also got the champion of champions absolutely flying miles ahead at the top of the provisional rankings and a very calm finish at 3-0 down for him here Yeah, Neil just caught out, maybe putting a bit of extra into that break because he knew the importance of it, do you think? Yeah, I think so. Well, I was talking about Tom's achievements. How about that? I mean, four Pro Series titles, the champion of champions. And, of course, he came into Altma Pool as a two-times world champion, widely regarded by a huge, huge percentage of the pool world as one of the, the very, very best in the world. He is showing us exactly why he had that reputation. You know, when you hear people like Mick Hill, one of the all-time greats, raving about the potential of Tom Cousins that you know he's two-time world champion and five times Ultimate Pool champion but he could go down as one of the greatest of all time by the time he hangs his queue up if he hasn't already <laughs> indeed yeah but it is just down to um, 
what Tom wants to do, to be honest, because sometimes he finds the game so easy. You know, why would you why would you put the practice in if every time you get to the table you're clearing up? You know, what have you got to go and work on? But um, I think he's proved to himself that he he needs to put the time in to to be competitive. I mean, those that have been following the Altmut Paul journey right from the start, when Tom first turned up, he was unbelievable in that first tournament. But he, let's be honest, he he went missing for well seven eight months really. You know, he was turning up. You know, I remember Pro Series three and four. You know, he lost to Gareth Potts in consecutive events in the in the first round. He had to come through the qualifying because yeah. he was a, a new professional. And he just didn't look like Tom Cousins. You know, no, take I nothing mean, away from Gareth, who played very well in those matches, but Tom did not look like he was just a shadow of himself. Correct. They were very jarring to see. And he's found that practice table, and he is showing us his very best now. I remember watching those games and thinking, wow, this will be good. And yeah. um, both were a bit of a non-starter, to be honest, weren't they? Yeah, absolutely. It was completely one-sided matches. And yeah, it was it was yeah very strange to, to see. And it wasn't just those matches, but he was like that for, for four or five events you know, throughout the, throughout the summer months. Finally found his form at the back end of last year and has not looked back. And well, that's a nice little nudge. He needs another one now, depending on the, the angle he's going to get on the red. He could leave himself on nothing after this one, or nothing easy. Yeah, because it doesn't look like the, um, the the middle of those two yellows goes in the right centre. So um looks like he potentially might have to play on the bottom yellow. And that's not an easy route round if he does. Or just do that. Just that do looks that. like it's come out perfectly for him. He did have a look down the table, actually, you mentioned it, and I think that was just checking out his backup plan, <laughs> just in case the nudge didn't didn't work out. But this is um, what it's like practicing with Tom. You think, oh, he's, he's in a bit of trouble here, what's he going to do? And then you learn. <laughs> yeah, there's a way. Because so many people just think Tom, you know, they go, oh, he's got you know an unbelievable break. He gives himself loads of loads of great chances, but they miss. You can miss those sort of shots. You can miss the subtleties of what he's doing out there, especially early in visits where he just makes the game look easy because he's played a subtle, clever shot, and all of a sudden it's all opened up, and then it looks so simple out there. Correct. Yeah, and I've heard a lot of people actually say that Tom. Um, they've described his game as a sort of almost a bit of a basher because um, oh, very early in, couldn't be in further from the truth. Uh, well, yeah, well, very early in frames, if he's got um, you know a, a tough ball that needs breaking out, his philosophy is I will go into it and I will go into it hard. Yeah, last time he was at the table, he was three 0 up, jumped the cue ball off. And this time he's dry. You could tell he's definitely taken a huge amount of power out of that break, having jumped the last one off the table. He was determined to keep this one in, in play, and he's done that, but yeah. less power, went less chance for ball to, going in. Went back to the centre of the table with the cue ball as well, so um, obviously negating the angle of the cue ball going into the pack without the cut means the cue ball can't really jump off the table. Not an easy opening for Tom. Well, not an easy opening for most players, let's put it that way. Yeah, talking about how clever Tom is, this is one where he needs to be because it's very congested thanks to the, the split not really opening up for him or for Neil. Looks like there's three yellows in, the, in a line by the, the eight ball that are just really awkward. Two in the top of the table, no problems at all. Well, does that open up the yellow directly left of the eight ball into the centre? That's what Tom's looking at, because if it does, then he's actually, with one subtle nudge, opened up every ball to have a pocket. It would mean having to get one good positional shot to get down to the bottom left-hand corner of the table. Yeah, but he would have given himself a good margin of error as well, because um, he's got the other ball, um, the, the lowest yellow on the table to land on in the um, right corner as we're looking as well, hasn't he, to yeah. set it up? which would probably be his ideal, would be to land on that one to get on the one in the centre to get on the eight ball. So there'll be a kick. He can't do it from here, so key positional shot coming up in two shots time, you feel. That looks very betwixt and between. Yeah. Assuming that was his plan and these balls do go, difficult to see how he's going to get down there, isn't it? Perhaps he's got a nudge in mind again. 
Well, this one goes past the red to the bottom of the table. And he's done it with pace because he wanted to play it off the red to open up the pocket to give him some more chance. Compromised the position a little bit by playing it that way. And he's still awkward here. Unless the yellow by the eight ball squeezes past the other one. To the bottom left corner that he's now opened up. That looks very tight. It does, doesn't it? And even if it does go, you feel like you've got to get at it really, really well to be able to get on the next yellow. Well, he's not on anything good here, but he does have a plan. So that yellow didn't go. I have to feel he was probably trying to slide past that rather than into it, unless he felt it, he needed a nudge and it didn't go in the centre as well. Now he's got to watch the plan and where the cue, where the yellow's going and where the cue ball's going. A lot going on here. Played to perfection. Yeah, just trying to figure out where the eight ball's going, Simon. In off the red in the middle, do we think? That's what he's having a look at. He's just far enough off the cushion that he can do plenty with this. He has options, but none of them are guaranteed. And he'll take that. He's got himself a shot. He's just watching where the cue ball goes, but he's on the eight ball. And this to tie the scores up. What a turnaround here. And the turnaround is complete. monster break from Tom unless he can no he's okay he's got options I was just wondering whether he just left himself a little bit horrible there on choices but he's got options here yeah it looks like it's going to be the reds just that red and yellow at the bottom of the table to figure out 15 seconds. and as you hear our referee or it's just saying we are into the final 10 minutes and therefore 15 seconds a shot. Yeah, it might be a commentator's curse, but I think this is something Tom's um, progressed at quite well as well in the last few months, a year or so, playing on the 15 second shot clock because, um, as you said, it was alien to a lot of people when it first came in and Tom didn't exactly hit the ground running, but um, now he is running. He, he naturally picks up his pace when he's playing well. He also, he, we didn't get to see it when he got knocked out of the Champions League, but he indicated that he's finding a level of comfort with a six-road shootout as well, which is dangerous for all other players because that was arguably his one biggest weakness with ultimate pause. He, he, it was avoid, oh, he's missed the cannon this time, but avoid the six-road shootout at all costs. Yeah. Well, he was riding all the momentum and hangs his head because he knows that's a big moment in this match, misses his cannon. Yeah, good news is he's got a, another go at it, but bad news is difficult to land on the ball you cannon in. Surprised he played it so firm? No, um, that's Tom's default, to be honest, make something happen. Tom's problem there was he had to leave it so late for the cannon I think his plan was to clear the ones at the top, leave the angle on the one coming down the table to play the cannon. Didn't get the angle right, therefore had to leave it so late. And when you miss it once, you're in trouble. So after Neil Raybone having to sit out the last three, three frames, he all of a sudden has a frame that he knows he should win, and it's going to be a, a huge one. Yeah, and I think Neil might just have been caught out by the shot clock there, because all the balls were out in the open. It was a good chance for Neil. Um, and I think if he had a bit longer to think about it, he would have thought about his pattern and probably cleared the balls. But um, well, to, be f to be fair to Neil, last time he played a, a shot in this match in open play, it, it was 30 seconds a shot. It was about 20 minutes left on the match clock. He's, he's been frozen out for the last three frames or so. So Tom's just been floating around the finishes. Yeah, correct. But I actually think that the shot that Neil played was the, the right shot anyway, because if Tom does hit his red, as he did, he's moving... Um, Neil's bad yellow or certainly making it easier to get onto. So. And these are exactly where you want them if you're Neil Raybone. Pretty much dot to dot. 
it's his break next as well, which he knows. Yeah, still plenty of time left for this match to finish. So Neil won't necessarily be thinking break and pot a ball and I've won, but he'll certainly go a long way to it if he does. For him. Big moment then, eight minutes, sorry, excuse me, six minutes, 18 seconds left, 4-3, Neil with the break. If he makes a ball here, he's back in the driving seat in this match, even if it's not a good chance to clear up, which it isn't. You say it's not, uh, I say it's not a good chance to clear up. Is it one of those clearances that you're still tempted by? There's one problem on the left-hand side here. Other than that, everything... Whether you go reds or yellows, because I think the yellow on the right-hand side will go off the, the red and open up the, the yellows as well. So it's one problem to solve. Yeah, I think so. Um, it's one of those, if, if you've got enough time, if you, more time, it's easier to work these clearances out, of course. But that's what separates, at the moment, the top players on ultimate pool um, from the rest. And that's the fact that they can think so quickly and, and work out these patterns and um, objectives within the sort of 15-second parameters, really. But it goes one of two ways. You either get them or you get yourself in trouble. Looks like Neil may be in a little bit of trouble. <laughs> and you see Tom in the background. He knows what's going on. Dusts himself down. Gets the towel, gets the cue, gets himself ready. And he's back at the table. Yeah, good cue ball from Neil. Great shot. Big shot coming up. From hampered queuing, you feel, or is he going to get rid of the hampered queuing first? Yeah. Looks like he's going to get rid of the hampered. He'd love to get back on a similar line. He wants that to travel. He would have liked another few rolls on that one. Do you think he's planning to pot the yellow here or nudge the red out? Red, he's gone for red. Oh, and that's how that's accurate he is. He, does the red he's next to go? I don't know. I think the one at the top of the table might go. And if not, um, he might have to play the plant. Yeah, the plant's horrible, isn't it? Very blind shot. There you go. It will have to be the plant. Unless he can see the one at the top of the table. He's eyeing up the plant here. This is very, very tough. It looks simple because the red's so close to the pocket, but it's far enough away to be missed, and it's a completely blind shot here. Great shot. That is absolutely brilliant from Tom Cousins. This layout when he came to the table was horrible. Starts with a double. Brilliant cannon out. Amazing plant. And he's now two balls away from tying this match up with only a couple of minutes left on the clock. Yeah, it's just Tom doing Tom stuff again, isn't it? Just waiting for the cameraman to get out of the way. No problems, though. Still well within this 15 seconds. And Tom Cousins has tied the scores up with 4-4, 2.59 on the clock. But um, with three minutes left, I think you've got to just try and put yourself a frame in front and put the pressure on the other guy. Oh, this is best break in the match. It's his absolute best break in the match. And look at this layout for him. These are all there. Neil taps his knee. He knows this is a great chance for Tom Cousins. Just checking the plants pretty much straight. It's close enough. It shouldn't be a problem for him. And it looks congested at the top, but it's not really. Although that's not the best shot he's ever played, but he's got a clear line to the plant at the top of the table. 
Big moments in this match. Keep an eye on that match clock as well. Yeah, still likely to be 30, 40 seconds left, I think, if Tom gets these for Neil. So not beyond the realms at all. Yeah, I don't think we're in a situation, as you say, Tom's clock management isn't as good as other players. I don't think there'll be any thoughts at the moment about running the clock down. He's just thinking clearance. Once he gets it absolutely guaranteed, he might start to run it down from there. Yeah, he played his last shot on the beeps, but as you can see, he's playing this one with a few seconds yeah. left to play. So, yeah, Tom's clearly just thinking, pot the balls here. And that wasn't ideal. He would have preferred not to get the cannon there. He knew he was getting it, but it's just made the next shot tricky. May have to come down the table. Oh, he's going to stay on the one he's nearest to, but the cue ball's tricky here. Yeah, middle pocket for Tom to control the cue ball. Just about in time. Where's the cue ball? He's OK. That was excellent. Now he knows. Now he knows he's got this frame. And now is where you, you need to take the time out. Yeah, Give this, is, this is where he's, he should have. That, he played that with enough time on the clock. That was another five seconds should have gone. And, you know, if he did the full 15 here and the full 15 on the eight ball, he's leaving 35 instead of 45 or 50 here, which is what yeah. he's going to leave. Yeah, now he looks at the clock. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I mean, we're talking, this is super fine margins, but this is the game we're in right now. It is, you know, yeah. that yeah. The difference between 35 and 45 is absolutely huge. Yep. And he's got a ball, but it's the wrong one. And he'll know there's nothing he can do to, in too much. So he's just going to come forward and shake Tom Cousins' hand. He had to deal with a lot there.